big piece of shrimp for a big bluegill. Here we go. That is a toad of a bluegill. How's it going guys? Sam from Mindeck Outdoors here. So today's video is supposed to be a catfish catch and cook at this little spillway I know of. And uh, that actually didn't really go as planned as you guys can tell by this title. Um, I actually went there and didn't catch any catfish. Like I was saying, catfishing was really tough. I couldn't even get a bite. So basically, I went out there for two hours, didn't get a single bite for catfishing. And then I decided to use cut bait. And that's when I caught one big bluegill. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to stick to bluegills. And I ended up catching, what was it, eight, eight big bluegills we kept. They're all decent size. They're all around like that 9, 10 inch range. There are some big ones in there. Um, I didn't keep all of them. I let most of them go. So I didn't want you guys to be thinking this was going to be a catfishing video right as soon as I opened the intro. So when I made the intro to the catfishing video, I was at Walmart. So I'm just going to roll the clip of me going to Walmart. How's it going guys? Sam from Mindeck Outdoors here. Today we're at Walmart. I have to go inside and grab some catfish bait because we are going catfishing. We're doing a catch and cook at this little spillway I know of. So I'm going to go inside and get some bait. So I'll see you guys inside. Chicken liver boys. Yo, we need some shrimp too. Well, we got the goods. I went inside Walmart and got shrimp and chicken liver. Some of you guys have been commenting on the last catfishing videos to use those stuff. So I was like, you know what? You guys finally convinced me. I'll go inside. You try it out. See if I can't catch any catfish on it. I'm thinking I should be able to catch them on it. So we're going to go over to the spillway and uh, see if we can't whack any. So I'll see you guys at the spot. Well, boys, I finally made it here to the first spot. And uh, it's a little spillway. It's not really ripping too hard. I thought it was going to be ripping a lot harder than this, but I mean, I think we'll still be able to catch fish. Here's a little spillway thingy, and it turns into this little pond, and uh, usually the catfish like to hang out in the middle. There's a deep hole. Anyway, I got my catfish around in my little slip bobber rod, just in case I want to use cup bait for bluegill or whatnot. I'm going to start fishing, and I'll see you guys on the chesty. This is what we're going to do. We need to catch a bluegill. Take a little piece of shrimp, thread it under the tungsten, and blam. We're going to cast this out there, see if we can't get bit. That's going to catch a bluegill. We're gonna use cup bait instead. Let's just hope that doesn't go anywhere. We got our little tungsten here. We're gonna be using shrimp as bait because I can't catch a catfish to save my life. There's some big bluegills in here. I know that for a fact. I saw some beef cakes in here. I've seen them. There we go. Like that's not a bad bluegill right here. Look at that tank. That is a beef cake, boys. Yee wee. Look at that bluegill. That's a good one. We're gonna throw them in the cooler for now. I'm gonna get back out there, see if I can't catch another big bluegill. This little spillway is hidden with big bluegill, I guess, eh? Criminy, these catfish are just swerving me. But now look at me, I'm catching all the big bluegill, eh? This is a little smaller one. He won't eat, but he absolutely inhaled it. Not a bad little gill, get him back in the water. Still got my tungsten and shrimp on. Cast back in that same little hole Right on that little weed edge. Every time I cast out there, I get bit. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. That one's ripping. Phew. He's not big enough to keep, but he choked it. Look at that. He murked it. Not a bad little bluegill. We'll get him back in. I'm kind of thinking the bigger bluegills might be right in the current. Only one way to find out, though. There we go. There we go. There we go, that's a better fish. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's that toad we're looking for. Shoo wee boys. Look at that daddy. He's going in the thing too. I think the decent ones are up in that current. Yeah, oh God, that was a big one. That was a toad. The one I just had on was absolutely giant. Oh no. That was such a big fish. Such a big bluegill for in here, dude. Yeah, that's it. Here we go. Look at that. Another good fish, dude. Another big bluegill. Oh my god. Look at that. Third decent one. They're all up in that current. We're just using a little piece of shrimp and a tungsten. And uh, they seem to be liking it, so we're just going to keep sticking with it. There we go. Oh, another toad. Another absolute freaking toad. Okay, he's not that big. This one we might throw back. That not another bad bluegill. What is that, four? We'll, we'll do a couple more. We don't need too many. Big piece of shrimp for a big bluegill. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Here we go. That is a toad of a bluegill. It's a bass. What the heck? 
What in the Sam hell? There's bass in here. I guess bass like shrimp too. Look at that. A little bass came out of this little spillway. Get him back in the water. I thought it was gonna be a big old bluegill, boys. I felt drag ripping right away. I was like, oh shoot. Oh God. Oh God, that's a tank. That is a tank. That is a tank. Oh my God. That is another big bluegill. We need to get back in there. This is the most insane bluegill fishing I've ever done. Oh my God. I thought he was a snag. Oh God, dude, I'm getting pumped, dude. This is this gets me going right here, baby. Big old bluegill, nothing better. Out of a tiny little hidden spillway, bet. Goink, oh, that's a good one. Oh, no, he's small. He's a lot smaller than, the, he's still not a bad one though, boys. Shoo, not a bad one, we'll get him back in. Still a decent little fish. Already getting bit. Let him take it. Wham, set the hook. Got another bluegill, boys. Crime in me. This one ain't bad either. We'll let him back go, though. Wow. Catfish were just not my friend today. Do you have it? Yep. Oh, God, that's a tank. Uh, he's big. He's big. We'll keep. Uh, I don't know. He's a, yeah, he inhaled it. He absolutely murked it. Oh, God. Not bad. Another little bluegill. We'll throw him in. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's a bass. Another freaking bass? Seriously. Ow, that hurt, right? He hooked me. Okay, get back in the water, bud. Ow, that one really hurt. Kind of surprised we caught two bass. I didn't even know there were bass in here. I guess you never know what you're gonna find in these little spillways. I didn't know there were big bluegill in here until today. Like, what? Oh, God. Buddy's ripping. That one's a cool colored one. He's a really cool color. Give me my shrimp back. We'll let Buddy go. Buddy's pale as all can be. Buddy's like an albino, sheesh. Literally instant, dude. Literally instant, oh God. They fight so hard. Look at that, not a bad one. We'll get him back in the water. I'm not getting much luck on the left side here. Here we go. He would be another keeper, but I'm going after King Daddy. Not bad. Get him back in the water. Here we go. That's the big one we needed. There's our bluegill. Not bad, not bad. Well, that was kind of interesting. We didn't really get on any catfish, but we did get on some giant bluegills. I'm pretty pumped about it. I'm excited to eat them. We're gonna go back to the house and clean them. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna clean them. I have a little different way I'm gonna cook them today. I'm gonna be grilling them with bacon. I mean, bacon wrapped bluegill. I've never tried it. I've never heard of anyone doing it, but I'm sure people have done it, but it sounds really good and I wanna try it. Kind of surprising, I caught a couple uh, bass in here too, which is really surprising. I didn't know they were in here. That's why I like fishing spillways, is because you don't really know what's in here and uh, it's kind of a surprise every time you go to one because you don't know what you're gonna catch. Today I was not expecting to catch big bluegill. I was expecting to catch catfish and obviously that did not happen, so this is now gonna be a bluegill catch and cook. Like I was saying, I'm gonna go back to the house and clean them, and I'll see you guys there. I just made it back to the house here, and I'm gonna start cleaning the fish. First thing you're gonna need is a cutting board or any surface you wanna clean your fish on. Then you're gonna need a fillet knife, and you're gonna need your fish, obviously. And uh, as you guys can tell right here, they have a big uh, gill plate right there, and uh, they have a lot of meat up here in the shoulders. So we're gonna slant the knife at a good angle like this. Ah. Rest in peace to the camera. Well, Carmine, that just was not good for the camera. Anyway, as I was saying, you wanna get behind the gill plate there, have a good angle, because there's a lot of meat up there, you don't wanna miss it. And I uh, make a cut, just like that, down to the backbone, you're gonna flip the fish around, and uh, you're gonna feel the backbone, and you're just gonna follow it all the way down to the tail. You don't, you wanna make sure you don't go through the backbone, because that would just not be good. And as you guys can tell, I don't know how well the lighting is, but you're just gonna go back through, Get it all the way down to the ribs. And then once you get down to the ribs, you're just gonna go right over the ribs. As you guys can tell right there, I got all the meat up, up in here. I left a little down here by accident, but that's not a big deal. You're not missing out on too much. And then you're just gonna take your fish, find where the tail is, get a good flex in your knife, and all that meat should come off the skin. 
just like that. That's the skin, we don't want to eat that. And then you're left with this juicy looking filet. Not a bad filet at all off a little bluegill. This is gonna eat up good. We're just gonna throw in a little bowl of ice, kinda get the blood out and whatnot, kinda wash it out. And uh, we're gonna let that sit in there for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna just to kinda show you guys like the perfect way to get all the meat and stuff, this is what you want This is what you want it to look like. This is a perfect example. As you guys can see, I got all the meat off up in here, down on the tail, down below the ribs, and over the ribs. And uh, you end up with this lovely piece of meat. You just gotta take it off the skin now. And as you guys can tell, this is all meat you can take off. Alrighty guys, it's time to prep the fish and turn on the grill. We're using the grill today. I think she's going, I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure she's going. Anyway, we're gonna let that sit, warm up, and uh, I'm gonna go inside and prep the walleye. I'm gonna show you guys how to prep them. You're gonna need two things here. You're gonna need the fish, the bacon, and the toothpicks. I guess that's three things, isn't it? All right, so you're gonna need one of the fillets, and then you're gonna take out a piece of bacon, just like this. We're gonna scrunch it up. Do it like a little ball. We're gonna take some bacon, wrap it up. Take a knife, cut it right here. And you're gonna take a toothpick, stab it through. Make sure that thing is tight. Boom, there we go. Little bluegill popper. We're gonna pop it in there. I'm gonna do that to all the bluegills and uh, I'll see you guys when we're done. So we got all the poppers here. We're just gonna take a little bit of Cosmos Honey Killer Bee and sprinkle just a little bit on, just for a little, just for a little bit of uh, seasoning. We're not gonna need too much, just kinda sprinkle it on. You want a good coating. Do a nice even coat on all of them. And boom, it's ready. Oh, let's go check on the grill. Okay, well, should definitely be higher. We'll turn up these, I guess. Close it back up and see where it goes. Hmm. Interesting. The grill's not warming up, but uh, we're still gonna throw them on. It might just be a slow cook today, and uh, we're kinda running out of light here, so we're just gonna slap them on there, hope for the best. So we're just gonna take one of our lovely poppers here, pop it on the grill, hope for the best. They should cook. You wanna cook the bacon, and uh, as long as the bacon is cooked, the walleye, sh or the, the bluegill should be cooked too. So we're just gonna let that cook for a little bit for like five minutes and we'll come back out and check on them. Well, it's been some time now. And I think the poppers are ready to be flipped right now. So we're gonna go check on them. The grill still says over just a little bit 200, but I think they're ready to flip. Ooh, yeah, you can see the bluegills flaking. That's good. We're just gonna flip buddy. I think it's hotter more towards the back. We got them all flipped and ready. Close that. Now they're cooking pretty slow. So I think we gotta give them like another 10 minutes. The bacon didn't really look that ready, so we might have to throw them on the pan. I don't really know. We're gonna let them cook for just a little bit longer and uh, I'll see you guys when they're ready. Well, like only an hour later, I finally got the fish off the grill and um, I have a story for you guys. So it was taking a while, like I was saying. It was only at 200 degrees, so I was just gonna slow cook it. And uh, I go outside to go check on them and all of a sudden I look at the temperature, it's like 400 degrees, it's ripping. And I go, I open it up, it's like the whole thing is on fire. It's like, not the whole thing is on fire because of the grease. But like the, the grill started to like work, like legit work again. So it was like, it was like, I sat on the highest thing because it's taking so slow. And it must have just, the grill just must have automatically just magically wanted to work all of a sudden. So it automatically just started, it started ripping really hard, like flames, full heat. And the, I look at the things and they're just KO'd. I'll, I'll show you guys. As you can tell, they're pretty crispy on the ends. The other side, the other side will kind of look like that. So they didn't turn out too bad. I mean, yeah, they're a little crispy, but they should eat fine. At least the bacon isn't raw. That is the most important part. And anyway, uh, the toothpicks were like, Right they were like breaking and stuff because they were like burnt, like I was saying. So I replaced all the toothpicks with new toothpicks so I can easily handle it without burning my fingers or my mouth. And uh, I'm just gonna let them cool off. Whew. All right guys, they are cooled down and it is time to eat. That's what it looks like, not too bad on the other side. So uh, we're gonna go in, cheers boys. I'm hoping this is gonna taste good. I've never tried this before, so fingers crossed. I'm gonna go in for a bite. Okay, first thought, you can taste the bluegill. The fish tastes really good. The fish is perfect. The bacon on the other hand though, burnt. You can really taste the burntness. So if you like burnt bacon, it's not bad. But uh, we're gonna go in for a second piece. So cheers again. That piece was a lot better. 
You could taste the seasoning. You could take the. You could taste the fish. You could taste everything on it. No, you can really taste the honey killer bee. Honey killer bee is so good. And uh, the bacon. That bacon on that one wasn't bad. It was a little burnt, but it wasn't too burnt. And it tasted really good. The fish. Oh, the fish was really good. If you guys have never tried this, I would definitely recommend it. I'm definitely going to be doing this a lot more. Because we do this with like ducks and stuff and put like jalapenos and stuff. Maybe I need to try that, like wire chestnuts but or like peppers. But this is good. If you guys have never had fish poppers before, I think I need to start like doing more fish like this. Because honestly, I can see walleye like this oh, would be really good. Anyway, I'm going to finish working all these and I'll see you guys after. So I just got done working all that fish. It was so good. I would definitely recommend it. I would give it like a... <clears throat> 8 out of 10 right now. I think if I would have burnt, burnt the bacon and put like peppers or like jalapenos or something on there, it would be it would make it 10 times better. Anyway, it was really good. And I would definitely recommend if you guys haven't tried it. I want to try it myself. So if you guys have any tips for me, leave a comment down below. I would greatly appreciate it if you guys did. So if you guys have any video suggestions for me, leave a comment down below. I like looking at them and they give me good ideas. Anyway, if you guys like today's video, make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. Oh wait, before I do anything else. Teal season is this Sunday, boys. Like I was saying in the last video, be ready for a teal video Sunday night. Um, we're going out early in the morning. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, we can limit out and I can grind out that video and post it by six at least. And uh, so, be on the lookout for that one. I'm pretty excited. As you guys know, I'm wearing my favorite hat. I've been wearing it the past couple days. It's a duck's hat. And uh, they just had a big drop last week. So if you guys want to check it out, we'll leave the link down below. If you guys like today's video, make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. And uh, like I was saying, if you guys have any suggestions for me, leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching today's video. We'll catch you guys on the next one.